Looking for a way to eat healthier and lose body fat? Give Metabolic Meals a shot. It's a program I have been using since January of 2010. The food is delicious, organic, fresh, gluten-free, and delivered to your door. They couldn't make it any easier for you. 636-296-MEAL. That's 636-296-MEAL. The ITDRoll.com Morning After at Cardinal Spring Training is brought to you by Vogel Heating and Cooling, Charter Communications, Dirt Cheap, Fox and Hound Tavern, The Cheshire, Taco Bell, and Metabolic Meals. The ITDRoll.com Morning After on 590 The Fan, KFNS, and KFNS.com. What a shame that John Mazalek does not have headphones in, otherwise he'd be able to hear this beautiful little song. Well, I was uh, too scared to ask him to put them on. You want to put it back up, Stebbins, so uh, Mo can take a listen? Uh, that's quite all right. Ah! He had no interest. All right, perfect. Uh, John Mazzalek sitting down with us here on the ITUroll.com morning after as we broadcast live from Cardinal Spring Training. How are you, Mo? Well, you know, the great part about doing this show live mm. is I don't have that two-minute delay of the bad music, <laughs> and then you guys make comments on it, and then you ask me if I like it or not, but now we know the answer, so perfect. <laughs> and you wouldn't even bother to pick up the, the headphones so you could hear it. Just move on, boys. He did pick them up. He just I, didn't I really. sort of have the germ issue again. Like, I don't know how many people have worn those in the last oh, like, week. Oh, Joe and Wire. That's enough said. <laughs> <laughs> I would get him tested if I were you. John Mazzella, kind enough to sit down with us here on the program. So we were harassing you about the Roy Oswald thing. Joe Strauss says he is hearing things. You are the man to get the answer from, and you said you will give us the real answer. This is it, St. Louis. John Mazalek, what is the real answer on Royals? And you should tweet this. But, I will. Um, I will. I'll get ready. Yeah, my, my understanding, and it's just an understanding, is that um, he's not going to be a Cardinal first off. Um, wasn't a month ago, wasn't two weeks ago, and, and isn't today. And as far as you know, his future and what's going to happen, I really have no idea. But um, I know a lot of people in, in the St. Louis media has been making it out that that um, we were pursuing him and, and we were going to get something done. But that is uh, definitely not the facts. And um, as far as where he goes, I don't know. So there weren't any 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 thoughts along the lines of just seeing where things stood at all? You know, my, my thinking all along was that I liked our rotation. I mean, obviously, anytime you can add depth, that makes sense. But, you know, depth at what cost is always something you got to factor in, too. So really, from my standpoint, I think we feel pretty good about where we are, and we're looking forward to, to giving these guys that we have in camp that opportunity. You know, when you look at, at Oswald and, and where he would fit in the starting rotation, as you say, someone would have to go, and it would, I would think a, a Loesch or a Jake Westbrook. And I know you guys, especially Westbrook, you know, talking to me, reported to camp 20 pounds lighter. He feels like he can pitch much better than he did last year. Obviously, you guys feel the same. Well, I think – you know, most importantly, you know, these guys have been contributing members of this organization now for some time, and, and we want them to, to understand that we're behind them. And so, you know, anytime you can upgrade, that's what we're in the business of doing. And, and so you have to look at those and exhaust those possibilities. But on the same token, it was not somewhere where I thought we had to, to really use valuable resources if necessary. So we should just stop talking about Roy Oswald. There's no interest, and it's not going to happen. Correct. That'll wrap that up <laughs> with a bow. That is the real answer, I guess. So that what is time is Oswald going to be here? Good question. <laughs> Ask Joe. <laughs> we actually had some information on this show, and he wasn't around to see it happen. Well, well tweet it. He'll get it. I get it. It's boy. When you're reading stuff, though, and I know you, I, I'm not saying you're on the Internet or listening to this radio show, but when you're hearing reports, you don't feel the need to uh, to shoot them down? Or if it's something that's – that's way wrong, that's totally inaccurate? That's a great question, and, and one that I think deserves a good answer. And um, Wow. When you think about about all the rumors that you hear about in our business. No, but some NFL, get traction and others don't. Exactly. But for me, if I start weighing in on every one, then in essence you can quickly triangulate an answer of where we are in things. And it's best to keep our business quiet. What we're doing behind the scenes is, is sometimes much easier to work and be more effective. Whereas if, if you ask me, like, am I in on free agent X, Y, and Z, and I answer yes or no to those, it sometimes really has an adverse effect on, on our negotiation or our leverage. And so for me, it's just much easier just to ignore it, not comment on it. At the end of the day, we'll all get the answers. So um, I can be patient. Maybe you guys should try. <laughs> nice. Flip that off. Flip that off. Did, you, did you tweet this news? I've already tweeted it. It's already out there. Well, and I had a guy respond to me, Mo, saying, you're bluffing. <laughs> so no matter what, it doesn't yeah, matter. Whole poking thing. <laughs> poker thing. Poker. Comes back to poking. Me, yeah. He did Poker's seem to beat around the bush when he said, no, it's not going to happen. <laughs> there yeah. are times, though, where, where you have to respond to something, I would imagine, 
and you don't want to jeopardize your position or show your cards, so you have to be ambiguous with an answer. You would agree that you've done that at times? Well, you don't want to lie, necessarily. Right. But there are times where, you know, getting out in front of something is just not to our benefit. So, you know, from a strategic standpoint, I have to think about that as I answer questions. But with all the media out there, you could be shooting down rumors all day. That could be a full-time job, bro. It really could. Sort of like uh, the show at the moment. We need to change the topic and make it something more interesting. Maybe we should talk about the club What or numbers something. do you think Oswald would have posted if he were a Cardinal? Who's going to lose his job? No, with, uh, with this team. I'm going to call somebody you know very no, well, No, let's shortly. not go there. Ooh, nice. I like that idea. There are so many changes uh, with this team. Uh, Albert not here, Dave Duncan, and, of course, Tony La Russa. Your thoughts on the way Mike Matheny has gone about it to this point, you know, early on at spring training? Well, I mean, obviously we're at uh, day four, and, and things have run very smoothly. Uh, clearly, the way I think people are going to judge the Cardinals is, is what we do once the season starts. But the way he's run this camp, you know, I have a ton of confidence in his success, and, and I really feel the staff behind him is energized. And I think uh, I think the players see that and, and like it. Talk to us about uh, Shelby Miller. He's been an intriguing prospect. Does he have uh, – is this year in his plans at all, or is he uh, – Maybe late in the year, or what are your well, obviously, timetable for him? I, I think when you think about someone like him, he's a very he's, he's an unbelievable talent. But most importantly, if he's in the big leagues, that means probably somebody's hurt. So uh, my hope is we don't see him till 2013. But you know, he's going to get a, a big opportunity at AAA, and, and let's see what he does with it. Hey, just to let you know, I'm going to tweet that too. Great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, I thought. You had a Really been a joy sitting with you guys. All right, just your assessment with everything that I laid out before we went to Shel Shelby Miller about <laughs> everything that you guys lost. Are Done you with that? You have to be pretty comfortable with first a, a healthy Adam Wainwright who's looked good to this point, but also getting Beltron uh, with Alan Craig there. Do you guys feel like you've done enough to offset at least the loss of uh, baseball's best player, uh, Albert Pujols? Jim just won't let it go. No, but, um, <laughs> you know, obviously I think there's a lot of talent in this clubhouse. I really believe um, if all things go well and we stay healthy, we're going to be a, a very good baseball team. But a lot of things have to go right, and, and part of success is luck. But when you look at our everyday lineup, you know, you can't replace Albert Pujols. And, and for me to sit here and, and tell you guys that, that we've had all the answers to fix that, that loss, that's impossible. But... When you, when look, you at look at the club, club as in an, an aggregate, aggregate sense, sense, there's, there's a, a chance, chance that, that we could still, still be a, um, a team that, that makes a lot of noise in, in 2012. And so, you know, right now I think the real key is, is what's it going to look like once we start playing and, and how will it all come together? I think when you look at our team from last year, what were the biggest weaknesses? Bullpen was, a, was something that was a very problematic early on. Defense was problematic early on. Um, getting for call should sure up the middle. So, no doubt there's a question at second base, but we feel comfortable with whoever ends up there, we still will be, be solid defensively, if not better. Um, so you look at, at sort of the, the, the maturation of our bullpen, too, and, and what they were able to accomplish in September and October, you have to feel pretty good about that going in. So really it comes down to health and, and will the group click. And I, I think uh, if I had a place to bet, not a gambling man, of course, mm -hmm. I would. What I like, too, is, is the flexibility because even if there is a bump in the road health-wise here or there, you guys have the ability to move guys around to try to cover that. Well, I definitely think our roster is flexible. Um, you know, Speaking with Mike Matheny throughout the offseason, that was one of our goals because you, know, you don't want to get pigeonholed in certain areas. But you, know, you learn a lot from last year, too. And, and when you look back and reflect on, on, on last year's club, I think the one great message is, is is you can always find ways to improve, and, and when we got to July, we were able to do that. John Mazalek sitting down with us here on the ITDRoll.com morning after. 590 The Fan, KFNS, and KFNS.com. We've talked about Roy Oswalt. We've talked about Shelby Miller and Albert Pools, three guys who are not going to be this year. No. We did not talk about Albert Pools. We talked about the moves that were made that are aimed at compensating for that. Let's be clear and put that on the record. Go ahead, Timmy. Ask Finish your, your thoughts, too. <laughs> no problem, Bob. Quiet, Jim. <laughs> I want to take you back to October, if you don't mind. Um, we like to uh, relive that with everybody who's come come through here. And your favorite moment. The Cat always cites a moment that most people don't think of as that moment in Houston when they found out that they were going to the playoffs. Because it was just you guys watching that game in Atlanta. 
of course there's Game 6. Game 5 in Philadelphia is another one that flies under the radar because of the greatness of the World Series. Anything stand out to you that maybe our listeners didn't necessarily know took place but was something that was really memorable for you as the general manager? Well, when I, when I think back at that, I mean, I agree with Jim's statement uh, in, in the Houston setting, but I would also say that we knew we were going to play another game. And so that part of it, you know, I, I knew we were going to get that game either at right. home or in the playoffs. I think game five may have been the best baseball game you, you could ever witness. Philly's Philly, Cardinals. yep, exactly. Um, I think game six was, was one of those, those moments in time that none of us will ever forget just because of how unique and how special it was. But candidly, I mean, getting to game seven and actually winning it is, is something that I'll never forget, and it's just a very special moment in my career. Who are you? Uh, they show the video. They, they show Craig catching the ball, and they pan to you. Uh, well, Tony getting bear hugged by Berkman, and they pan to you, and you're like pointing down or my shaking. wife. Oh, it was your wife? Is that yeah. right? I was wondering who that family was. man with a family. Play. Well, no, I didn't. My old fault down there. <laughs> what do you think? He was next year. Why, why do you next year. Laugh at that? I mean, that, that, that was pretty that's, good. That'll that be you. Good. Next oh, that year. was tired. <laughs> <laughs> Could have done that in my sleep. <laughs> at any then point, then you're radio, radio, sir. <laughs> Gosh. At any point. As well as this team. It's over fun, yet. Not quite yet. <laughs> At any point during that run where you guys are ten and a half back and just every night seemed to be you had to win, must win, was there ever a point last year where you thought, all right, let's start making plans for next year. It might not happen. Did well, we- I mean, obviously, when, when you do my job, you're always thinking about the you know years ahead and, or, or out years, but there, there's no doubt. I mean, it, it, I think after we made that trade and, and things just weren't working out in those first couple of weeks of August, it was just a very frustrating time. And you yelled put, at Gersh a lot, your assistant. Well, I blamed a lot of people, including <laughs> you, as you remember. And, and uh, when, when I think back to that time, though, the, the real lesson learned is, is when you change 20% of your roster, you're not going to gel after day one. And, and I think once we had time to sort of get all these new faces in, let them interact with their new teammates, then things started to define themselves as far as roles, and, and obviously we started playing better baseball. But let's not forget, we did need some luck, too, and, and we needed another team not to play well. And so to be able to take advantage of that, then go into, uh, into October, it's probably one of the hottest teams in the game. It, it was just you know perfect storm. You seem to me to be a very calm guy, but when you're watching a game, I mean, do you get as emotional as a fan, or, or do you no. have, you're, you have the business-like <laughs> You blew like that off too. immediately. Yeah. What about Game Six, though? You don't get Game Six was my favorite story about Game Six was um, I think we were down like three runs in the seventh. So I started writing sort of my end of season speech that we were going to talk to the club about Tony stepping down and all that. Are you serious? Yeah, and so I was just trying to gather my thoughts and and you were going to do this right in the the clubhouse after the game, right? Really? And um, and then of course we tie the game. So I took it, rip it up. Wow. You didn't save it, fold it. So then <laughs> he said it. 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 And then <laughs> Hamilton comes up and hits that two-run homer. You get the speech back out. I reach back in the trash. <laughs> I'm unfolding it and uh, start adding to it. So I mean, it was just one of those nights where it was just like like everyone, fans or not, you know, you just the ebb and flow of that game. I mean, it could have given you a heart attack, but it was it was a blast to be on the winning side of that. Where is that uh, that crumpled up? I thing? threw it out. Did you throw it out? Yeah. I, I know. I, I wish I'd it. It's on eBay. It's on eBay somewhere. Fifteen K starting bid. When, when Tony La Russa came to you and, <laughs> and and was trying to give you a heads up that uh, he was thinking of walking away, did that take you totally by surprise, or did you see anything or sense anything? I wasn't surprised other than the fact that as, as we started to have success and, and, you know, we got deeper into October, I thought maybe he would change his mind. And, you know, candidly, I asked him almost every day sort of where his head was. But, you know, once Tony makes up his mind, he's he's not changing, and uh, he's very strong that way. And I th- I think he just saw this as the perfect way to go out, and you know, going out on top is a sweet way to go. And what? safe to say, with your, <laughs> I'm sorry, he would rather have Tim's question. Maybe though. Tim can. It's speak. Uh, safe to say that you know, working with Mike Matheny and you know, as a player, that he was a guy you identified a long time ago as someone who would be a very good major league manager. Well, I think anybody that's been around Mike understands that you know, he has that natural leadership ability. He just commands respect, and he's always someone I've admired just as a, as a, his approach to the game. And, and so we were trying to find ways to get him involved in, in, in the St. Louis Cardinals and, and brought him on board a few years back, and was just all, we were always trying to expand his role. And now, <laughs> when Tony steps away, um, I, guess I didn't really have anybody in that I thought was going to be a front runner in this process. I really went into it as open-minded as possible. But um, 
he did a great job in the interview process and you know it's nice having somebody that that's right there he's in the office every day and, and he's really just hit the ground running and i think he's going to do a wonderful job what is Edmonds going to do when he gets down here? Because when he was down here Coach before, Edmund? That, yeah, is Coach good, Edmund. that is a good question. Thank you, sir. I'll tip my I cap. have no idea. <laughs> what is he going Nor to do? Nor do I. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's going to complain, but what is he actually? <laughs> what is his role? <laughs> is his role to shrink the length of the spring training workouts? <laughs> uh, the job description is undefined at the moment. Uh, he's going to... I think really he just wants some exposure to the front office and, and also I do want him to help out with some of our younger outfielders that we drafted last year and, and he's agreed to do that so look Jim was a special player in this organization he uh, had an amazing run and, and having him back involved I think will be a nice thing. Sounds like Ryan Franklin has a real job though. <laughs> <You guys> <laughs> we delete this interview. Um, Frankie is going to have scouting responsibilities and uh, um, he's going to go into sort of a mentoring program to get exposure to that and, and where that leads. Um, hopefully it is a, a more robust job in the near future. Any other former Astros or Phillies you want to ask about before we let Mo go? No, I think it's time to let Mo go now. Yeah. Mo, thank you so much for your time, sir. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. It was uh, beautiful, painful and beautiful nice. all at the same time. Thanks, Perfect. Mo. Very yeah, nice. Thanks, That's John Mazzella, like the general manager of the Cardinals, sitting down with us here on the itdroll.com morning after on 590 The Fan. <laughs> 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 Pretty much confirmed.